Well, folks, once again, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Captain Boat Builder. It may look like I'm still here on my remote Pacific tropical island, but in fact, I'm not. I'm still sitting in front of the backdrop, still trying to shield myself from the realities of winter. But regardless, back to episode 17. Episode 17 today entitled Painting and Little Things Part 2. Yes, I'm still painting, and yes, I'm still doing little things on the boat, but bit by bit, I'm getting closer and closer to completion. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, Painting and Little Things Part 2. As I continue on with the painting, you'll notice, of course, that the boat is still up on its side you'll see that now it's sitting on sawhorses that are much smaller and the boat is much closer to the floor. And so what this gives you is the top surface, which would be right here, working on this part of the top side, this part of the hull. It's just about chest level and then it goes down at both ends. And so what you have is you have a surface that's much easier to work on you can stand pretty straight most of the time that you're sanding and sanding and sanding, which of course is what I'm doing. But uh, I'm also uh, trying to position the boat so that this surface right here <clears throat> that you can see is flat. I'm gonna wind up straightening the boat out a little bit and leaning it a little bit uh, to the right of this image so that it's more vertical, so that there's even less chance that the paint will run. I'll be painting the top sides soon. Also, uh, just for those of you who don't happen to be excellent carpenters, and I'm not especially good, I found that uh, in making sawhorses, it's quite easy to buy these um, ready-made clamps that will clamp a two by four and the legs. You just put it together with some uh, self-tapping screws. You can make them any size you want. As you can see, the legs are quite short so that the boat will be down closer to the ground. But if you're not a really good carpenter, this is a very, very easy, to way, easy way to make sawhorses. I'm making some nice progress on the painting. This is the uh, port side of the boat. It's finished now. You can see the white stripe that I've got here along the bottom. I went back first, put two more coats of white on here with some careful sanding. I don't know whether you can see it. I'm not sure that it'll focus close enough. It might. Yeah, I think you can right there. You see that little tiny line? What that is, is that's a tape line. And I was trying to figure out how to integrate this with this. And I thought, okay, the tape is going to leave a tiny fine line that you can see right there. But it's barely visible and it gives you a good clean line. So I went back first and put two more coats of white on the uh, stripe along the bottom edge of the top sides. And then I went back and put tape underneath the edge here, and I put tape here, and I wound up putting on three more coats of Interlux uh, Brightside Polyurethane. I really like the color. The paint laid out very, very nicely, as you can see. There's tremendous gloss. I did this with a a two inch foam brush and I've used regular brushes quite a bit and uh, in spite of the fact that you can see just a little bit of lineage from the foam brush I think the foam brushes actually work better at least for me than the uh, china bristle again this is the paint that I've been using this is a uh, interlux bright side one part polyurethane and this particular color is called ocean blue Another shot from the bow. I did want to mention that with the taping, I've been using this stuff. This is Scotch Blue Original. And I put it on, it gives a razor sharp line, uh, whether it's here or up under the edge of the gunnel. 
I've had uh, no paint bleed, bleed through at all. And the other thing I found is that you can leave it down and paint over it uh, for three coats, maybe over the course of three or four days, and it still pulls right off without uh, messing up the paint. You get a nice sharp line. So uh, this side of the boat is complete. I'm quite pleased with the finish. Excellent reflectivity, if you want to call it that. Super gloss and uh, just turned out great. I'll be doing the other side, but you won't want to see that because it's just a repeat of this side. So there's the paint on the top sides, finished. And more little things. Here's the baler from the outside. It's installed and sealed. And around on the inside. And we got the baler on the inside and I've also installed both of the covers for the access ports in the um, flotation tanks on the side. Those are bedded and installed. I just wanted to show you what I used for bedding. There's lots of different products that you could use. But this is, uh, this is my favorite stuff. I gotta tell you, it's not cheap. I think this tube was maybe $17. You may be familiar with this. This is 3M Marine Adhesive Sealant, Fast Cure 5200. This stuff is white. You can clean it up with uh, acetone or a dry rag or both. Uh, I just did wanna warn you that uh, this stuff is about as permanent as you can get. So when you seal up your, anything in your boat, this stuff is gonna work. It's totally waterproof, fresh water, salt water, it doesn't matter. It's a great product, but once it sets up, you will never ever get the stuff up. I like it for things that are gonna be permanent. It's that Fast Cure 5200. And more little things. This is the familiar Dremel tool super high speed, easy to use. This particular wheel that I have on the Dremel tool, this is an abrasive cutting wheel. And you can see it's not too big in diameter. Remember when you're using the Dremel tool, as they say, don't use a lot of pressure if you're trying to cut something, let the Dremel tool do the work. It's very high RPM, as high as 30,000. And so a light touch on this cutting wheel actually cuts faster than pressing down hard. And what I've used this for is I've used this to cut off the ends of bolts, stainless steel bolts. For the baler, I'm going to use it for the rudder fittings. And uh, it allows you to cut very, very cleanly right up to the edge of the nut. The uh, cutting wheel will actually help you surface it, make it nice and smooth but it allows you to get into small places that you can't get with a hacksaw. So if you have one of these, or you've got a friend that have one of these, a lot of woodworkers and home hobbyists use this tool with this uh, abrasive cutting wheel, it'll cut right through the stainless steel and you'll have nice smooth bolt, uh, bolt ends. One thing I did want to mention about this Dremel tool, uh, as good a tool as it is and as useful as it is, and uh, I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence because uh, this should be obvious. These cutting wheels, this little cutting wheel right here, turning at very high RPM. If you're not careful, this thing will cut through your skin like it's not even there. It's extremely sharp. And if you're, like I said, if you're not careful, you can cut yourself badly. And you'd think that's obvious, and it should have been to me, but I did manage to take a little nick out of one of my hands uh, a while ago. And uh, it's almost instantaneous. So if you are using a Dremel tool, and if you're using this little cutting wheel to cut the heads off bolts, or to do any kind of metal cutting, just be careful, because it's sharper than I can tell you. When I talk about little things, here's some more little things. Here we've got the dagger board and the rudder blade. Again, this is probably five or six coats of epoxy resin sanded with a block by hand. And now you're looking at three coats of varnish. You've got an 
excellent surface. I'm still struggling a little bit with just tiny little pieces of dust, but these have turned out uh, quite nicely. And uh, I think mm, maybe another two or three coats and these will be done. So I'm quite happy with uh, the finish here. Also more little things. Over here, I've got the tiller, working on the tiller, building up the varnish. This is three coats of epoxy sanded, and now we're up to the third coat of varnish sanded, getting a nice surface. And uh, there's gonna be another two or three coats on this, and then the tiller will be finished. Well, I mentioned that I wouldn't subject you to the boredom of looking at the painting on the other side, but I'm so proud of this, and I'm so pleased with the way it turned out that I just couldn't resist. So again, this is the starboard side of the boat. And now both sides are finished. The top sides are finished. This nice stripe is finished. The bottom was finished quite a while ago. Turned out quite well. I'm very pleased with the paint. I like the color a lot. It's a nice color. And uh, I'm going to be turning the boat over so that it sits on its bottom. And I'm gonna be doing some last minute touch up painting on the interior. And then I'm going to be positioning the hole in the thwart for the mast. And also I'm gonna be positioning the um, pieces of wood that will secure the butt. Um, I've come up with a, a scheme for making sure that the mast is straight. Um, it's very important to me that the mast is straight both side to side and front to back. So I'll show you my scheme, my plan. We'll see if it works. Well, in finishing up this video, this is uh, painting and even more little things, sort of painting and little things part two. Here's a little thing that uh, is very important. It took me a while to get it straight. Cut the hole in the deck for the mast. I'm still working on that to get it the exact right size. It is in the right position. And in the way of little things, I'm going to be attaching the uh, gudgeon panel to the transom here. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's just another little step that's completed. Looking at the inside, I thought it was finished, but now that I look at it, I think the floor sections probably need one more coat. So I'll be doing that a little bit later. So I'll be finishing up this video with a different view of the boat. I'd call this the fisheye view or the duck view, down low, close to the waterline. But this is how the stripe and the paint on the top side turned out. And as you can tell, I like it. As you can see, a lot of gloss, a lot of reflectivity, again, if that's a word. So it's just more painting and more little things. And as I might have said before, you know, the old line about the way to eat an elephant is just a bite at a time. And uh, that's kind of the way it is with building these little boats. If you want to get it as perfect as possible, you just have to do it a little bit at a time. So thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. In the next video, I'm going to be tackling the installation of the mast step, and that doesn't sound like much, except the position is essential to get the mast perfectly straight. It has to be straight from port to starboard and also almost perfectly straight from the bow to the stern. So again, I'll show you a little system that I think is going to work for ensuring that the mast is in the perfectly straight position. Thanks again for watching. We'll look forward to the next one. So long.